there are two critical things that we must do when it comes to the financing of disaster recovery. One is that we must ensure that every dollar of relief that is spent goes to the people who are the intended beneficiary. There is a deep sense sometimes that we must just have a free-for-all and just give and give away, and there is no accountability. And then we end up in a situation where the government is being criticized as being corrupt and there is no accountability. And I'm being very clear here with you and your listeners that, you know, the government is not going to do that. Everything that we give, there must be accountability for it. Prime Minister, at this hour, very, very serious efforts are being made to really get the recovery going. Are you satisfied so far with what your administration and the various state agencies have achieved? I think we have done well with the resources that we've, we have, but I'm a hard marker, so I think we can and must do better. In what respects, particularly? Well, well you know, firstly, I, I think the management, and I would say very quickly, the management of the immediate response, water, food, um, we're going to tighten up on that, because those are the core, the, in my mind, the core things that people would want to have just after a disaster. My last report, um, as it relates to, to that, is that so far, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security would have, as of today, end of today, would have reached about 4,664 families. That would work out to about 18,000 persons with food packages with supplies to last them for four days. Uh, I'm going to try and step that up a little bit more so that everyone uh, who is in need can get. So um, I, I don't have the how well dispersed this is over the parishes that are affected, but I suspect it is sufficiently dis well dispersed. But I want to seek to increase the number of packages, the number of persons, and the number of days they get support. So in, in that area, we're going to try and, and move a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. uh, the other areas are a little bit more... Um, uh, um, tricky uh, to, to deal with because they are very involved and have other elements outside of our control. So we would have liked to return water, for example, to areas uh, that are without water but not necessarily severely affected by the hurricane. But the problem, of course, is that the electricity supply is out. Uh, and there are many areas where persons are saying, hey, my community was not really affected. I don't have any down poles. Why don't mm -hmm. I have electricity? Um, and the challenge is that the, the grid operates at several levels, uh, and you have to ensure that the generation part of the grid, which is the actual plants that generate, produce the electricity, that those are operational. And today we were advised by JPS that their plants are functioning and operational. And then you have to move to the transmission element. And those are the main lines that move the electricity from the generating plants and distribute them all over the island. And those were affected in significant ways. And those are very technical areas to work on. Uh, so the, J the uh, JPS they have been working very hard to ensure that their transmission lines are up. Um, they have 72 main transmission lines. Um, 51 of them were affected. So you can imagine that even areas that did not get any significant impact mm -hmm. from the hurricane itself would be affected because of the, the, uh, the back end of the system. Uh, Are you so, now considering asking for external help for JPS? I'm, I'm glad you raised that. Um, we did discuss that today. Um, the, the sentiment is that if we need it, we certainly will take it, and even from a precautionary standpoint. But the projection of restoration is that we're going to try and work as quickly as possible. But if we were to take on 
the additional work of integrating um, outside assistance, which requires certain protocols, training, and so forth to ensure safety and to ensure the efficiency of the operation, we may very well extend. So the strategy now is to use the resources that we have, work as fast as we can to restore electricity to all the areas that we can. And if we see that we cannot do it, um, then we would have to go that route. But so far, the plan suggests that we can do it. And where we are now, based upon the report from um, JPS, is that they have 70% of their customer base restored. Um, and they, sh- they shared with us a schedule. I, unfortunately, I don't have it in front of me right now to, mm-hmm. to advise the nation. They shared with me a schedule as to how the rest of the nation will be brought back on very quickly. Um, but the parish of St. Elizabeth, which was the most affected parish by virtue of loss of electricity, that they have a special plan for St. Elizabeth. So the, the, at 70%, which is not bad, and they have reached up to 70% in four days, uh, they will be close to 90% in another couple of days. Uh, and once that is improved, then we would see an improvement in water supply and in telecommunications. Prime Minister, those affected would hear that you are now able to draw down significant sums from the disaster uh, relief mechanisms you've put in place, your administration has put in place. They want to know how that money is going to be spent and allocated. Talk to them about how that's going to be done. So let's just be clear, right? Um, There are two critical things that we must do when it comes to the financing of disaster recovery. One is that we must ensure that every dollar of relief that is spent goes to the people who are the intended beneficiary. There is a deep sense sometimes that we must just have a free-for-all and just give and give away, and there is no accountability. And then we end up in a situation where the government is being criticized as being corrupt and there is no accountability. And I'm being very clear here with you and your listeners that You know, the government is not going to do that. Everything that we give, there must be accountability for it. And, uh, you know, even though it is an emergency, it is a disaster, that does not suspend accountability. And I'm saying that for our elected representatives, for our technical officers, for our administrators, and for the beneficiaries, that the disaster does not suspend accountability. And I think that's a very important message to be reinforced. But we are not going to create unnecessary layers that will lengthen out the period of recovery. So we're going to do the right thing and do the right thing as quickly as possible. Secondly, we have to be very smart about recovery expenditure. So there, there, I've heard the conversation that the government has all of this money, why not just spend it? This is a few weeks into the hurricane season, and we are experiencing a Category 5 hurricane, which hit Jamaica as a Category 4. And right after that, the conversation hasn't um, you know, brought in the fact that immediately after the hurricane, we had heavy rains, which brought even more flooding. And it is going to be an active season, and it is likely that we're going to have more weather events that will be of high severity. So the resources that we have, we have to spend them sustainably. So, for example, uh, there is the issue of communities not having water. So how do we provide water quickly, but at the same time ensure that that water that is provided is sustainable? Right. And so the question is, is is this uh, spending going to be through particular agencies or through political representatives? How is your administration going to ensure that it's dispersed? I I mean, whatever the spending is going to be, some, some spending will go through entities. Some spending will be from, uh, you know, private sector initiatives, some spending will be MP, uh, MPs don't spend, and I want to just be clear on that. MPs can't spend. They don't spend. They make recommendations on spending. So they, they will be able to give 
uh, recommendations, but they don't spend. It is always agencies that spend. Now, the, 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 the issue, though, of the sustainability of the spending is something that I want the Jamaican population to appreciate. Now, you could do a relief program where you invest all the funds in, let's say, um, putting water trucks to go and deliver water. That's one way of doing it. But another way of doing it would be to use some of the funding to buy backup generators for water pumping stations, which would be not new to Jamaica, but if we were to do it in such a way that we now have a backup independent power source for water, then if JPS goes down in another weather event, we could continue to have water supply. It would solve this problem, but it would also give you a kind of endurance through other hurricanes to come. So we're, we're thinking strategically as to how we deliver the relief now, but to ensure that that relief lasts. So, for example, there will be a lot of requests about helping to re-roof homes. We could just get uh, zinc sheets and give them out, but we have to go a little bit further. We have to now pair that with protocols about how to restore the roofs. Many, if not all of the roofs that have been blown off were not anchored with hurricane straps or with well-accepted building um, codes that should have been enforced. So when we're doing the recovery, let's do it smart. So we, we could easily repair a roof today and another hurricane comes tomorrow and we're back at square one. Do you worry that that approach, though, might delay the response? Well, as I said... We have to develop a bureaucracy, meaning a public administration that does the right things quickly. It may add a few more layers, but as we get accustomed to it, as we integrate technology that will speed it up, then you will begin to see the benefit of it. Uh, so my short answer to that is it may delay shortly, but it will save you a lifetime of suffering. Mr. Prime Minister, the issue of sustainable recovery. We know we are now in the middle of the urgency of the climate crisis. We, we know that story well. Any thoughts, for example, to doing certain practical things such as placing underground or, or pole, what, what is power, that? Lines. power lines? Yes. Well, um, Cliff, since you've gone back to, to JPS, I mean, uh, uh, I, earlier I said we were at 70%. That was my old update. They have just given me an, an, uh, a newer update which says that they are 83% of their uh, customer base. Now, I know when I say this, there are going to be persons saying, so uh, I don't have any electricity. I see just down the road or the neighboring community. And I've gotten so many of those complaints, and I relayed them very strenuously to the JPS team who explained that, yes, you will find this because several communities um, that might be side by side in close proximity, those communities don't all get supplied from the same source. Uh, and even then, if they do, there might be breaks in the circuitry, there might be other damage that is not visible to the eyes of the customer, and that might explain why this service uh, might not be evenly restored when it is. So I, I want to say to, to those persons who are um, still without their electricity that every effort is being made, uh, and it is indeed um, uh, to be positively commented on that the JPS has been able to restore 83% of its customer base and uh, is working to, to reach to the high 90s of restoration in a few more days. As I said before, there will be a special restoration strategy for St. Elizabeth, which was uh, probably the most damaged uh, mm -hmm. parish based upon the electricity grid. But in terms of them putting their infrastructure on the ground, um, we, we did not get to explore that today because, as you probably would have known, I had mm -hmm. to break cabinet early to do another event. But at some other time, I will discuss with them specifically. But I do know that it is something that is being considered. Um, and uh, it is a costly venture. And it's 
not appropriate for every application and circumstance, but it mm-hmm. is something that should be considered where it is appropriate and applicable. Prime Minister, we've had reports of price gouging, wholesales rapidly or you know, vastly increasing prices of goods and, and services for people who are trying to access them. What's the administration's response to the that? The administration, even before the passage of the hurricane, um, passed an order to deal with this matter. The Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce uh, would have made that. And uh, if any uh, supermarket, any person, any um, reseller is uh, found to be doing that, they should be reported to the Fair Trading Competition, to the Consumer Affairs Commission, uh, and to the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. We are going to treat with this very seriously.